Welcome to another team selection video ahead of Gimmick 31 and this is a bit early, there could be a final team selection video once we get more information but I've already got some plans established and despite some really good Gimmick 30 performances by some of my players they could still be making way. So I'm going to be recapping on how Gimmick 30 went, my kind of update in rank and then talking about my transfer plans and my team selection heading into Gimmick 31. A massive shout out goes out to all channel members, the Patreons, and also everyone who has subscribed to the channel. So thank you very much. You can also join the Discord server and also follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Dylan RCM. So check those platforms out. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing and smashing the like button, sharing this video around where people who love FPL and UCL Fantasy. In Game Week 30, I got 51 points without using my free hit. Some of you actually benefited a lot, gained 20, 30 points and got around 70, 80 points, which is fair play. I think that is worth it. A free hit can gain you at least 20 plus points and it's a pretty powerful chip. I personally wouldn't have benefited as much. I already had eight players. It would have been nine if Rafinha hadn't missed out with illness. And also, you know, some pretty disastrous things happened like Jimenez being red carded and that also affecting the Wolves defence. I had two Wolves defenders there with Jose Sarr and Connor Cody and in the end, it was a bit of a catastrophe from that game. But Spurs versus West Ham, that's where most of the points were at for me. And Hume Ming Son as the captain, I made the right decision not to take a hit to get rid of him, to get Harry Kane in. But at the same time, I would have got Harry Kane probably for Raul Jimenez. So maybe I would have gained something from it. But in the end, I'm not really thinking about that too much. And I'm quite happy with my team going forward. But there are definitely some issues to address. And a lot will depend on Ramsdale, Trent Alexander-Arnold and all the other injury news we get. Jimenez is going to be out until Gemic 34 because remember, Wolves vs City is going to be a blank in Gemic 33. So Wolves do not have a game in 33. So Jimenez will be back by Gemic 34. And to be honest, even if he was available for those games, I just don't think that it's worth holding on to the Mexican. So I think that my team is in good shape, but definitely some ways to improve. As I alluded to earlier, the double walls defence is a bit unlucky. I think that they could have kept the clean sheet if Jimenez had stayed on the pitch. The red card itself was slightly harsh. And Leeds, I mean, it was a crazy game, by the way. The way it all turned after that incident was crazy. And fair play to Leeds. It was an exciting game to watch. And by the time that Leeds scored the second, I basically just said, you know what, Leeds, go on and win the game. I really don't care at this point. And they did. So obviously, it's a really good game of football. Some really good games across the weekend, despite only having four fixtures. Kieran Tierney with a clean sheet. Those of you at Ramsdale are really unlucky. And there was some news, I think, the day before um, the lineup was announced against Aston Villa about Ramsdale sustaining a hip injury. And some people thought that this injury stemmed from as far back as the Leicester City game. But in fact, it was something that happened during the Liverpool game, I think during the first half. And unfortunately, that meant he missed out. Leno did pretty well in his absence, although he looked shaky in certain moments. And it's just really unlucky for those of you who have Ramsdale and you didn't play the free hit. It's very unlucky. But Kieran Tierney, Gabriel, all these defenders offering really good value. And I think Leno's owned by less than 1% of the game. And actually my cup opponent actually had Leno, which is crazy, but didn't really matter in the end. Doherty with no clean sheet yet again. And he has been pretty poor ever since most people have brought him in, including myself. But... At the same time, you know, I wasn't going to expect double-digit returns every single week. That's just kind of having too much expectation. He was never going to sustain that for a long period of time. He is still a good FPL asset, though, and people need to remember that. He is first choice over Emerson Real, but just don't be surprised if the Brazilian gets a game or two over the next five or six game weeks. As for my midfield, very happy with it, mainly with Saka and Hyun Ming Son. Salah obviously blanked and same goes for Che Adams in my starting 11 but the rest obviously played or in the case of Rafinha missed out. That was the big talking point heading into that game week 30 deadline and that's all we were talking about in the deadline stream. We were trying to see if there was any news and there wasn't concrete news or sources to say that Rafinha was actually available or not and therefore I just ended up keeping him and I'm actually happy even though I could have got Barnes or Madison and I would have gained quite a bit from that move. I actually think that keeping him, having two free transfers heading into next week gives me more flexibility, especially if someone like Trent or Ramsdale is out long term, although I don't think that will be the case. But we have to wait and see over the next few weeks. A lot of people are going to be asking me, what is the deal with these two? And Ramsdale is expected to be out for two weeks, so he could actually make that Crystal Palace game. And if he doesn't make it, he should be back in time for Gimmick 32. And as for Trent... That's going to be an even bigger question mark. I think he is more likely to miss out in Gimmick 31 than Aaron Ramsdale. But if Trent wasn't to miss out and he's playing Watford, you don't really want to get rid of him. And even though you might have some plans to upgrade your midfield and attack and also go for a Chelsea defender like Reese James if he's fit, 
just getting rid of Trent doesn't sit right with me. Despite this, there is an argument behind getting rid of Trent because in 32 he plays City, in 33 you could wildcard and then get some double gimmick players instead and then bring Trent back for gimmick 34 or you could just cover him with Robertson and go for a cheaper backline in a sort of way. I would still recommend going fairly big at least at the back but let's just wait and see with Trent. I think that's the key thing and same with Ramsdale and do not make early transfers unless you're really going to be priced out and even then I wouldn't recommend it. Just try to hold on to your transfers and don't make early moves because anything could happen during the international break. There could be more injuries, illnesses, COVID cases. I think Robertson actually is going to miss a game for Scotland because he has COVID. So just keep this all in mind and then we'll be good to go. And the rest of the midfield, like I said, Kulisevsky, I think he was a bit quiet against West Ham. He still had some good moments. It was very difficult for West Ham players to get the ball off the Swedish international, but he didn't really impact the game as much as a Hyun Ming Son or Harry Kane, who got three assists. And despite the fact that Son outscored Kane, I lost quite a bit of rank because of Harry Kane. I mean, only three 4,000 places in the grand scheme of things, but that's only because I had Son captain. Otherwise, I could have been looking at a significant red arrow. And Jimenez, of course, he was the disaster class of the week. I was talking about selling him in game 29, actually, despite the game he had in 30, and there was only four fixtures going ahead. And honestly, he's just been so poor this season. The same goes for most forwards, but Jimenez has got two red cards against Man City and Leeds. And he's been so inconsistent. You know, the occasional hall here or there with an assist or maybe a goal, but just nowhere near consistent enough. And I think he's definitely worth selling. I'll be talking about him and other players that I talked about, like Trent, etc., in the transfer tips video. So stay tuned for that. But pretty much the rest, nothing needs to be said. The rest just blanked. And I'm pretty happy, all things considered, only eight players and 51 points. And those of you who had Son and Kane, fair play. You probably had a really good week. And the same goes for Barnes, Madison, etc. So free hit was fairly successful for quite a lot of you. But now let's forget about Gimmick 30. Move on to Gimmick 31, which should be a bit more interesting. More games, a double for Burnley and Everton. But is it worth going for these assets? I'm going to offer my opinion after talking about my team selection. Without making any transfers, I have 0.7 million left in the bank and I've got plenty of flexibility with two free transfers. I'm even willing to take a minus four or even a minus eight hit. So I've got Ramsdale in goal and if he is fit and available, then the only goalkeeper transfer I would consider in the next few weeks is getting rid of Jose Sarr because he blanks in 33. The fixtures turn fairly soon for Wolves and their form is quite bad ever since game week 26, you could say. And then Trent as well. Let's wait and see what happens there. But if he is fit... I would like to keep him, but one possibility is to actually downgrade Trent to a cheaper defender and that gives me enough funds to make the other moves that I'm planning on making, which I'll talk about later on in this video. Robertson is a keep. He is, in my opinion, the best defender in the game right now. He is absolutely sensational. The only time he's blanked recently, like I said in my recent video, is when he missed out entirely and didn't play a single minute. So Robertson, so consistent and right now he's even better than Trent, which is saying quite a lot. I've also got Doherty to complete the back line. Now, Arsenal have a better defence than Spurs in my opinion, but I've already got Ramsdale and I would rather balance out a little bit more because I don't necessarily expect Arsenal to keep a clean sheet against Crystal Palace. The same goes for Wolves, arguably, against Aston Villa, but that depends. You know, that game, it could go a number of different ways. But I've gone for Doherty right now, and if I decide to make another transfer in defence, then maybe I'll shift things out a little bit more. The midfield looks pretty solid. I've got Hyun Ming Son there as my vice-captain with Kulusevski. Now, I would rather cover Spurs with Kulusevski and Kane. Obviously, the ideal one would be Son and Kane, but... In terms of my team structure, it just wouldn't be possible. I'm still considering different ways to go about it, but in terms of the plans I have currently, I probably will have to get rid of Hyun Ming Son despite his really good performance in game week 30. And I was talking about the fact that West Ham can see a lot of chances down that flank where Son operates in. And in the end, you know, he did even better than I expected. And I didn't expect him to outscore Kane. It's just a shame that Kane ended up bagging three assists as well. Rafinha's at home to Southampton. I still think it's worth selling the Brazilian. Obviously, these two fixtures against Southampton and Watford in 31 and 32 are pretty good for Leeds. And Rafinha could haul. But he blanks in 33. And also, Rafinha has been very frustrating. You know, he's always yellow flagged due to illness or an injury. And he's a very frustrating player. He should be getting a lot more points. He's a quality player obviously on his day but in terms of FPL returns he doesn't really deliver the way he should. Salah as the captain I think that's going to be just a quite easy decision but 
Let's wait and see because as I keep talking about in my recent videos and streams, Salah is going to be facing off with Mane yet again. Egypt versus Senegal, a World Cup qualifier, really crucial there. And it's only a few days before the Watford game. So there is a possibility that Salah is actually benched against the Hornets. So keep an eye on that. But if we kind of get an inkling that Salah is going to start, there is no doubt in my mind that even over the likes of Harry Kane, Robertson, Trent, Son, etc., I think Salah is by far the standout captaincy option this week, and I would go for him. Saka away to Palace. You know, I'm very happy with Saka ever since I got him in, and I've actually had him in two stints this season, and I was very frustrated when, as soon as I got rid of him the first time round, he actually kept on performing against Leicester. He's been a good asset, and I'm a bit surprised. I didn't expect him to be so consistent in this campaign, and he's been one of my best purchases since Game Week 26 alongside Robertson, and he came up really clutch in Game Week 30, so very happy with him. And I've got two Southampton forwards, and... They are facing Leeds, so it's a good fixture for them. And they've also got a double in 33 because they got knocked out by Manchester City in the FA Cup. So Arsenal and Southampton will be doubling and they will be playing each other in Gemic 33. So that's very good. And Bro is a bit of an interesting one. I actually wouldn't want to start him because I'm not entirely sure if he is going to start. But he still has a possibility of reclaiming his spot in the starting 11. He is a good player and recently he hasn't been in Ralph Hasenhutl's mind. But he is still worth considering. And around his price he's still one of the best. There's also Mateta who's been popping about and Kucha Hernandez. So some of you might think of swapping him out for one of those two players I just mentioned. But I would rather get rid of Jimenez personally and it just makes sense. He's actually missing out the games. Breuer still has a chance of scoring some points. If we're looking at the rest of the forwards, the one that I'm really missing is, of course, Harry Kane. And despite how good Huming Son is, I can replace him with quite a lot of different midfielders. Maybe someone from Leicester like Madison or Barnes or Kai Havertz. So that's the kind of reason I would have to get rid of Huming Son and getting Harry Kane up front. And it would be at the expense of Raul Jimenez keeping Breuer and also Che Adams, who in my opinion is one of the better forwards. And if we look at FPL points between forwards in this calendar year, Harry Kane has 85, and I think the second best one is Ivan Tony with 51. So the gap and the golfing class between Kane and the rest of the forwards is frankly insane. And Che Adams is also up there in the top four alongside Timo Pukki with around 40 points, but no one gets close to Kane. I really need to get him because if there is actually a forward who's doing well, you might as well have him and also cover the midfield with different areas and the informed players with good fixtures like Chelsea and Kai Havertz. So the bench speaks for itself. I could put Tierney ahead of Cody, but like I said, I would rather not double up with Arsenal defence. I don't necessarily expect a clean sheet there against Crystal Palace. That should be a pretty tough game for the Gunners. But that's how my team is lining up without transfers. Now let me show you some plans I have and I'm looking to make three transfers potentially for a minus four, but I'm only settled on two moves right now. And I would need to then decide the third one in order to fund the other transfers that I want to make. So let's get into it. There's still quite a long way left until the deadline. So this is all initial plans and a lot can change between then, especially with injury news. But two moves that I'm quite confident about is moving Hyunming Son for Kai Havertz and getting Harry Kane in for Al Jimenez. I think there are pretty good transfers. And as a duo, I think Havertz and Kane win all day long, especially with the current form of the German and English international. And the bench looks pretty solid, actually. And I could order it in a number of different ways. That's something that I wouldn't yet decide. But with this team and with these two transfers... I would be 1.4 million short, so I have several options at my disposal, but there are two that I'm mainly looking at. One of them is moving Trent Alexander-Arnold to a Chelsea defender, and I think that's a pretty good move. And I could even possibly do Joao Cancelo, but I might be 0.2 million off, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. But getting Rudiger, or if he's fit, Reese James in for Trent is actually pretty good, and I diversify my defence a little bit more, although Liverpool have been one of the best recently, even better, uh, or matching Manchester City and Chelsea. So that is also something I need to think about and balance out. And the alternative would be downgrading someone like Rafinha or Kulusevski, probably Rafinha in this case, to a cheap midfielder like Gordon or Jacob Ramsey. And I think I would mainly lean towards Gordon because he's a bit cheaper than Ramsey and he's also got a double this week. I could even play him and then bench him for the rest of the season. But now that we're onto the topic of Everton versus Burnley and their double in 31, I think you can guess, and I've talked about this in recent videos and streams, 
I don't think it's worth going for too many of their assets personally. So from Everton, there's Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who always looks like he could be a good FPL option, and he has been in the past, but I'm still not quite too sure about him. From Everton, personally, the standout is Gordon, just because he's so cheap, and if he flops, then he's just cheap anyway, and he can sit on your bench. And as for Burnley... There's not really anyone. Nick Pope is probably the best asset right now. Verkos might be decent up front, but he's only got one goal and two assists. And I'll talk about him in my transfer tips video and talk about whether he should be a buy, hold, sell or skip. But I'm still not really feeling it. And the same goes for all the other Burnley assets, Corne and all the defenders. I just don't really see it personally with these Burnley assets. And the same goes for Everton. So maybe go for one or two of these players and that's fine. And Gordon could come in for Rafinha. But it's not really a transfer that I'd be wowed by. And it's not something that would greatly improve my team. It's just there to fund the other two moves. And once again, I think the other move would be pretty good as well. Moving Trent Alexander-Arnold to Rhys James. But that all depends on the fitness of both of those right backs. So let's wait and see what happens there. Let me know, what do you prefer? Trent to Reese James or Rafinha to Gordon? And I would have a bit of money left in the bank with those two moves, around 0 0.4, 0 0.5 million or more. And then going into future weeks, I can also make some transfers to then attack the later game weeks. And in terms of the free hit, I'll be talking about this in separate videos as well. So stay tuned for that. I'm looking to use it in 33, but I'm open-minded to actually skipping it. So sticking with these single game week players like Harry Kane, Mohamed Salah, etc. in 33, avoiding the free hit and using it in game week 36. But those of you who have the bench boost, for example, I would rather use it in 36, although I can see the benefit of using it in 33 because two cheap Southampton strikers in Che Adams and Broya can be on your bench and bolster your bench boost and you can get it out of the way and then focus on taking money out of your bench and putting it into your starting 11 for the rest of the season, which could be a really good strategy. So I don't think there's a clear cut way, despite the fact that I've always said free hit 33 and bench boost 36 looks like the best, but that could be different for your team and you have to be open minded because sometimes the reversal of those two chips in 33 and 36 could be the best for you as well. Even if I managed to bring Harry Kane in ahead of game week 31, as I talked about before, Mohamed Salah would be my captain. But once again, that's all going to be down to the information we get about Salah, whether he's going to start against Watford, although I wouldn't expect too much information before the deadline. But that's how my team would look. I think it looks pretty solid and well set for the future as well. Although those of you who still have the wild card in play and one or maybe two free hits, you're in a really good position to attack the rest of the season. But thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, smash the like button and subscribe if you're new. Let me know which content you want to see. Like I said before, there could be a stream where I rate your teams. We haven't done one of those in a while, but also because it's the international break and we're approaching the end of the season, we could do maybe one or two final more videos of rating your teams in this channel. And I would like to do it as a stream actually to engage with you live in the live chat as we always do. There's always going to be the deadline and reaction stream. So stay tuned for those once they come about. And I'd be happy to do maybe one or two more streams during this international break. There's also UCL Fantasy content, the best Limitless team, the best wildcard team, and my team selection, which are all going to be coming out within the next week or two. The same goes for the transfer tips video for FPL and also the best free hit team and much, much more. So stay tuned for that. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram so you never miss an upload. The same goes for subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification bell. And also consider joining the channel as a channel member or on Patreon. You can get exclusive early access to all my videos right now. It's a special offer that lasts, I think, until the end of the month. So check that out. There's also the Discord server and the league. All the links are in the description below. So take care, enjoy the football as always, and I'll see you next time.